So there's less than five minutes now before the Reserve announces its decision. And according to many economists, this time it really could go either way. Last month, the Reserve left rates on hold. But this month, there are reasons to lift the cost of borrowing and there are also reasons not to. We have our business team on hand for that decision. Peter Ryan is down at, at the Reserve in Sydney and Alicia Barry is with me in the studio. Alicia, let's start with you then. Uh, this is very much a live meeting, isn't it? What are you expecting? It certainly is live. The last four meetings meetings have been fairly close calls and I expect this one will be as well. Instead of relying on my own intuition, I'm going to uh, go with the forecast of George Tharanu. He's the chief economist at UBS. He has predicted the last 12 decisions correctly and this time he thinks that interest rates will go up to 4.35%. Of course, we do have slowing inflation. The 6% rate for the June quarter was much less than economists had expected. Retail sales were also weaker as well when released on Friday, but the labour market is still pretty hot with an unemployment rate of 3.5%, uh, a near 50-year low, and it hasn't budged too much in the face of the last 12 interest rate increases. The RBA has raised the cash rate by 400 basis points since May last year, taking it from 0.1%, the emergency COVID levels, up to 4.1% now, one of the fastest hiking cycles on record. So will they go again? Well, according According to George Tharanu, yes, they will. Okay, well, now to our senior business correspondent, Peter Ryan. What do you think, Peter? Well, Roz, uh, we've seen what the money markets have predicted before, and they've been wrong. This time, they say there's a 84% or 86% chance that rates will stay frozen at 4.1%. But as Alicia was saying, you've got to listen to the economists like George Tharanu, um, two of the big four bank economists, saying that the Reserve Bank Board is most likely quite keen to take out a bit of an insurance policy uh, against inflation ticking up again. And that need to raise rates again later on this year, which is um, why I think the evidence points to um, a rate rise this afternoon. But of course, I've been wrong before. A lot of other people have been wrong before um, that we'll be finding out very shortly. But they'll be keeping a very, very close eye on inflation, which even at 6% down from 7% is still very high. High services inflation in a very tight jobs market. So um, the red light's still flashing for the Reserve Bank Board. Yeah. So, Peter, if the Reserve doesn't raise today, are they more likely to go next month or is that it? And similarly, if they do put rates up today, is that likely to be the last one? In other words, I guess, could we have already seen the last rate rise? Well, we may well have seen the peak, um, but we may well see uh, Philip Lowe after this meeting has one more meeting in September. He might have one more shot left in the locker to uh, raise rates, given that he's been very, very hawkish on inflation, saying repeatedly in statements that he and the RBA board will do whatever it takes to tame inflation. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, one more hike either today or September, and that could be it. Okay, well, the seconds are ticking down before we'll know the answer to the question we've been asking. Uh, one of those concerns, Peter, and it has been a concern for a few months, is that any further rate rises could tip the economy into recession. Now, how close are we to that scenario? Well, well, that's right. Even before today, um, bets were about 50-50 from some top economists that we might end up in a recession, even without more rate rises. But one more today, maybe a follow-up, could really seal that case. And Peter, see just Australia to interrupt, uh, Alicia has the announcement. The RBA has left interest rates on hold at 4.1%, a pause for the second month in a row, bringing uh, some relief, I suppose, to those who are repaying debt, predominantly those with a mortgage. Uh, we can take a look at just where the cash rate is now in terms of how high it's gone. We looked at this before, but because we haven't gone further than uh, today, we are at 4.1% for August. I will bring in a chief economist of from KPMG, Brendan Rin, who's standing by. Brendan Rin, you saw the case for a pause as a most likely scenario, and the yes. RBA agreed. Yeah. Well, you know, um, it was pretty much a coin toss, honestly. Um, uh, I haven't got it as right as George uh, for the last 12 months. I, I think I've, I picked one wrong uh, in, in that uh, run. Um, but uh, on the whole, it, it is a really line ball decision. Um, I suppose the things that tipped in our decision to suggest there was a pause was really the latest inflation data 
that yes, it's still running on an annualised headline rate of around 6%. But if you have a look at the last three months, it's only running at about 0.8 of a percent over the over the three months. So you annualise that, um, then you're at 3.2 percent for um, uh, the 3.2 percent uh, on a uh, roll on a three month annualised basis, which is sort of at the top of, of the uh, band, but not too far out of it. Where we're seeing the inflation growth is still in the services sector. It's being driven by wages. We know that there's a lag effect there. And so really it was about the Reserve Bank, as I understand it, trying to get the balance right between um, knowing that the economy is already slowing, um, seeing that the labour market's already slowing, uh, and also then balancing the fact that large parts of the inflation boom um, have already started to come off. And you're talking about inflation there. I mean, the Reserve Bank's uh, statement says inflation at 6% is still too high and going uh, down to the bottom paragraph, some further tightening of monetary policy may be required to ensure inflation yeah. returns to target in a reasonable time frame. That's the paragraph that's been in there for a number of months as we've gone through this tightening cycle. So mm. in your view, will we see another rate rise and what will the RBA need to see in order to hike rates again? Well, Alicia, we've actually, in our own forecast, we've put in two rate rises by the end of the year. Um, the, um, that was what the market expectation was only about a month or so ago. Uh, and when we did that, we had the Australian economy uh, basically bumbling along the bottom of zero growth um, and getting a negative uh, growth outcome for March quarter of next year. So that was a real risk that all you needed was a, even a small shock coming in from the side and that that was going to cause a recession um, at a headline level, let alone the fact that we're, we're already in a per capita recession and will be for some time. Um, uh, I, what all that means is that I think that with the latest data that we're seeing, the expectation is that inflation is going to come down relatively quickly. Um, I do think that we've probably got one more rate rise um, uh, to come, and it could be uh, that uh, Governor Lowe uses that last September meeting um, to, to fire that off. But I do think that this issue about checking data um, as it's released to keep more real-time understanding of how the economy is performing you know, is really going to be the predominant influencer um, now. So um, I'm sorry I'm being a bit ambiguous with regards to whether we've got you know, one more to go or where we're at top. This issue of picking the top of the cycle with regards to um, monetary policy, you know, it is art, it's not science. Um, uh, and so trying to understand that uh, can be a bit challenging. And as you say, the RBA is very much data dependent at the moment. Will it wait until it sees the third quarter inflation number at the end of October before it raises again in November? Or, you know, is that kind of time frame on the cards? The bar to raising seems to be a bit higher now. Um, I, I would expect that you'd actually start to see some monthly CPI data. If we're not seeing that come down, um, fairly quickly, then I think that the RBA will go ahead of um, the October data. I, I think that what we're wanting to see is monthly data also with the labour market. We're absolutely expecting the labour market to soften over the next six months. Um, where we are with regards to just labour force um, now, to maintain a 3.5% unemployment rate, we need something like low 30,000 new jobs being created each month. Now that's a big ask, particularly when we know the economy is already slowing and the long run trend for new job creation in Australia is sort of in the low 20,000s. So we're looking to have a 50% increase against that long run trend. I don't think that that's possible. So what we're likely to see is even still with solid employment growth, just the ticking up of the unemployment rate. And we've got that going up to the Nehru level of four and a half percent by the middle of next year. Brendan Wren, always great to get your insights. Thank you so much. So, Rose, Thanks you can Lisa. see there that there's likely another rate rise uh, from the RBA, but very much data dependent and the labour market very much in focus.